had to call the meeting to order at 6.30 p.m. What additions do we have to the agenda? I don't hear any. Okay, review of minutes, August 1st, 2022. Uh, you weren't here at this one, John. I think you can go. <laughs> I think we decided that you could. Yeah, yeah. We decided that years ago. Yeah. You see? See? See, see. Are you, are you, have you read it in these minutes? Oh, some do we freeze it? I didn't remember anything. You know, I don't know if I was I don't much confidence in you as I used <laughs> Are you in on the meeting, Judith? I am. Oh, okay. Oh, you're right there. There we go. I liked the minutes. I thought the minutes were just fine. I think that's fantastic. I hope to pass them as written exactly like that. <laughs> All right. Any further discussion? I'll uh, second the motion. We need to Oops. somebody second the motion. We'll say we'll say Judith second. Just because that's a good thing to do. Yeah, great. We have a big picture of Judith tonight. Yeah. Okay. I think it's smaller. Um <laughs> <laughs> It's like you're right here. <laughs> all of you in favor of passing the minutes, please say aye. 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 All of you. The ayes appear to have it. They do have it. The minutes are passed. Um, the next item is public comment. And I don't see any public comment. Uh, am I missing something? Is there somebody up there that's public comment? Uh, yeah. I don't have any comment. Kim did call me and wanted to know, make sure that you were behaving yourself, Seth. So that's that's why I'm on. Oh, <laughs> that's the only reason, Scott? Well, because I love you all and I just, uh, and, and I'm bored as hell. So <laughs> <laughs> I can sure that if you want. Okay, so we have no public comment. Um, 640, we're a little ahead of schedule, but I suggest that we. Stay ahead if we can because we have a lot of things to do. So the board work session discussed municipal assistant interview questions. Um, I've read all the questions. Um, I'm okay with them. Mm -hmm. um, but does anybody else? Jump that? ahead if you want. We, we, it's not let's go to the questions first. And if we're ahead of schedule, we can we yeah. can go through the most of this huge list here and maybe put a few in. Some low hanging fruit. Yes, yeah, some yeah. low hanging fruits on the how about the v VLCT annual meeting? No, first let's do the questions. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to do questions. <laughs> You're really hard to deal with. Well, that. my name's all my name's assigned already. Did you take too much sugar or something? <laughs> <laughs> He's a little crunchy tonight. Yeah, okay. okay, so tell me about the questions. Everyone happy? Yeah. Are, are these the ones that were used in your interview with her? No. Okay. They are not. What is signing? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, some of them are somewhat similar, but no, they are not. Uh, okay. I think they're fine. I, I think they're fine. Yeah, they're fine. You would have one that comment. Um, I guess I'm cautious about commenting in a public um, setting. So I, I think I'm, I'm fine with them. I'm fine. Unless we're in an executive session, that's um, so. All right. So I think we're fine. Um, the next thing scheduled is the interview, which we're 10 minutes ahead on. So let's pick something that's fairly innocuous. How about the, the town delegate? Yeah. As John suggested, I, I nominate Carl. I'll sign with that. All those in favor? Oh, yeah. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Are we talking about the real CT? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. It looks like a good That's... session. Yeah. Have fun. 
<laughs> is that something you want to do, Carl? I mean, I'm trying to say your car. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Right. I, I know a lot. And yeah, you do. And I would uh, defer to somebody else on the board if they want to do it. So right. That's definitely a polite way of yeah. right. John, do you want to know? <laughs> Thank you. Amy? No, I'm busy. Julia? Um, I unfortunately I can't, um, but it, it looks really interesting. So have fun. They do free lunch here, right? They do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Usually pretty good. Okay, so Carl wants to do it. Yeah, I'll do it. Okay, perfect. Yeah. We have to, do we have to make a motion then? We already did. Yeah. No. no. Yeah, I, think I, we need a I think we do. I think, I I think we, we do too. I think we do. Well, I need the motion. Okay. Second. Do a second. All those in favor of probably being delegate, please say aye. 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 Delegate, you appear to have to do that. Okay, so we still have some time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, employee reimbursable expenses for conference travel. Is that so true? what this is, is um, the staff has asked me, well, I mean, I asked them what the approach was for um, travel expenses, because I don't see any line item for that in the budget. And some conferences could be the distance yeah. away where a hotel stay would certainly be helpful. Um, and they told me that it's kind of been protocol that travel costs were not reimbursed in any way. Well, that if you chose to, to, to mileage it, but a hotel say it's not. No, hotel so stay. if you choose one, it limits where they can attend if it's a multi-day conference, because it, <laughs> unless they choose to put the bill for the hotel themselves, they obviously would likely not partake in a conference that. Yeah, I don't think the issues come up. So, as far as multiple yeah, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure what has been discussed or not been discussed. So I'm asking the board, what is, I don't know what, Judith, and your experience with the state, I don't know what well, normal guidelines are. Most people reimburse. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and what types of conferences or opportunities would there be for the uh, staff? <clears throat> To attend well the lct town fair would be one um and then also actually before that i provided information on it's a it's actually a conference for treasurer and town clerks um as well so they would be attending that conference and then also town fair um you know it some people may or may not want an overnight stay and it also depends on distance of course um in my experience in the past, usually an hour was kind of a cutoff for travel time. So I'm not sure, Judith, what the state does as it relates to any kind of, you know, obviously if, it's, if there's a conference happening and it's in a short distance, obviously you wouldn't yeah. put for a hotel room and yeah, more should we really expect that. If it's a two day conference and they're expected to attend both days, then staying overnight isn't unreasonable. Um, yeah. well, it makes sense, and for safety and all of that, it you know it's more prudent to do. Um, yes. Usually, these conferences have a room rate deal. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So why so, don't you just take it case by case? Well, and that's what I'm just asking. I didn't know if there was any kind of reason why this wouldn't have been reimbursed in the past. Because usually, so, when when there's conferences, they usually rotate don't they around the state like it'll be the same thing but it'll be a month earlier like i went to the select board conference a month later or something yeah so the, the, there's a, a city managers association that holds meetings throughout the state sometimes they're down in and uh, kellington sometimes they're over in virginia sometimes they're up in newport those ones i always went on with hard guy would, would stay because they're multi-day and they cover all the yeah, it just comes out of the general funding. Uh, no yeah, I mean, there's no specific like line yeah. item for this right. type of thing. That's the type of thing I would probably look yeah. to change as we go forward. Mm -hmm. um, but I know that one person did, for example, for town fairs, stay overnight, and they actually paid that to hotel oh. stay themselves. Oh. Yeah. Oh. So, really? um, yeah. So I. I've never heard the issue come up. Well, yeah, it may not have ever made it to you. Um, nope. May have just been, you know, so as long as you all are agreeable mm -hmm. to that, again, applying common sense and reasonable from a right. cost perspective, I think mm -hmm. it's it's appropriate. To Judith's point, I, I consider it a safety issue, mm -hmm. and I don't want someone to be in a position that they're choosing to drive mm -hmm. maybe further than they should at night. Um, 
after sitting in a conference all day. When yeah, and also they're doing something that's going to benefit the town. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you, we should encourage them. Yeah, of course. Okay. We want them to be in good enough shape to appreciate what's going on. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Okay. So that's all I just want to do. We should provide sure. some guidance on you know, how many conferences or which conferences or something this applies to. Or do you just yeah, that's one flaw in kind of our budgeting. We don't have, we just kind of have a bucket of funds. There. I don't think we're going to have to worry about um, the amount of conferences. Yeah, there's I mean, really not that many. So um, yeah. We're kind of seeing this too, I think, right now. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if we had a couple of employees, Want to go to a couple of conferences, which are that's all there is. Yeah, it'd be great. Yeah. yeah, and I think honestly, the way I would approach it, Carl, is as long as we are within budget. If another conference were to come up and it may be an increase to the budget that is there, then I would bring something like that to the well, we don't have a budget right now. Approval. We do have a budget for con. There's a con there's a yeah there's oh. like a just, I forget what it's called. There's a okay. training or something. Oh, budget. okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you say take take the hotel expenditures on that budget. Yeah. I would probably create a sec a new cost code for that because I think it's better to track that separately versus okay. typically in my experience you track your conference fees separate from your travel costs. So I would probably create a new code. It may be an unbudgeted item per se, but it may be covered to your point by other funds within the general fund um, in so, that in that training line. So you're are you suggesting allocating a portion of the current training line to this we could i have to i'll have to look at that okay. training line and see how much is there how yeah. much has been used in the past yeah. um but uh yeah i don't think this was ever anything in my experience typically you budget for conferences that you would plan to attend mm -hmm. you would also budget travel costs for those conferences as well so, I, think, I think conferences are a good investment for employees I, I, i'm glad that people are interested in getting out and learning more and just a chance to get yes. out of the office and and uh you know meet counterparts around the state so i, I want to encourage it i also want you know the select board to have some <coughs> oversight over the process so uh if you want to come back in a future meeting and, and say okay this is the line item i want to uh, create and this is how i want to allocate funds to it I think that would be a good way to go forward Does that okay. sound right I, yeah, that's fine. I mean, in general, the budget was never done at this level of detail. So this is something I'm planning to look at for future budgets. So I will be revisiting in general how the budgeting okay. is done. Okay. You've just been carrying blanket numbers uh -huh. for all these years. There's no real detail put into how these numbers uh -huh. came to be. Mm -hmm. So this is something that I kind of want to go through this year to really be able to look at expenses, redo reporting as well to provide mm -hmm. additional information so that we can actually start budgeting in this way. Mm -hmm. So I'm well, looking I'm at a brand see. new approach right now um, and, and going forward, especially as we get into this year. So trying to rebuild the current budget is will be a bit difficult um, mm -hmm. to try to recreate detail that has never been included um, in the budget. Well, we have some money in that. Yeah, we do. Correct. How about yeah. I think it's a, I, I think it's a, it, yeah, it's, it's, it's not much. And I have to look at what has been done in years past as well in that line item as well. Yeah. Well, yeah, I bet we, I bet if it's $500, if I win, uh, I think it's more. Oh, it is. Yeah. I, I'm just trying to respond creatively to your suggestion, Gina, that the select board uh exercise oversight just by saying hey let's as long as it's in the budget then it's fine yeah exactly and that's the only reason i'm suggesting of creating another cost code is uh -huh. i think it's dangerous to start varying costs and codes just because a budget is there mm -hmm. if it's not truly applicable to that line and typically travel costs are not included with uh -huh. fees for a conference mm -hmm. typically just like mileage is not included, mileage is carved out separately. Right. It's the same kind of concept. Right. That's right. So in the past, they have created new cost codes for things. I mean, just to give you an example, on um, the uh, background checks that were done in, in employees were coded as legal fees. Mm -hmm. I found that odd. And sure enough, the external auditors agreed that that was not really inappropriate. Just because there were funds there, I think it was coded there. So I'm trying to remedy some of those <clears throat> approaches that have been done in the past when okay. we look at the, at the numbers. So, yeah, because a mileage has not yeah, you been don't typically need to move budgets around um, because the budget has been set, has been approved in the, in the town meeting. So you don't typically reallocate budgets in a year. You typically will record costs where you would want to see them. And then when you go to do your budget for the next year, you right. remedy those, those buckets accordingly. Yeah. So that's what I was planning to do. So, so, so just to make sure I understand you, let me try repeating what I, I think I hear. Uh, you're suggesting we use the existing budget as it was passed and mm -hmm. we charge overnight expenses for conferences 
to the line item that is already in the budget for conferences, even though that's not what was originally. No, I would like to add a new cost code to actually track the cost and an appropriate cost code that's you do. being for, for this year's budget. Correct. Okay. Because otherwise you lose visibility into, yep. into that cost. Okay. And then are you proposing a sum to go into that cost code to say, okay, this is what we expect it be I, this year? In my experience, and I don't know you guys tell me, typically when a budget is set, we do not redo the budgets. I mean, that budget is in the town report. So you overextend it and make up the difference. Yeah, exactly. You, yeah. you just, you just go over in a line item and, and you, you, when you yeah. basically fix it when you do the a budget going forward. I mean, frankly, it's an oversight in my opinion that travel costs are not included in the budget in any way. Um, it could be that it was an, in, that's why I thought it was an intent that right. the town did not approve of paying for an overnight stay. Yeah. Um, so, but no, typically you don't move a budget because then we would no longer tie back to what was in the town report. Okay. So how can the select board exercise oversight through the budget if there's not gonna be any constraints on how much is spent on this new code that's created? I'm just trying to figure out a way that we can exercise oversight. I, you guys tell me how you've done things in the past. This is a normal practice for me, um, that this is how, in my experience, companies would do this. If there was a miss in a budget, you would track the actual expenses, and then you do the budget for the next year, you run these types of situations. And, and I would suggest if somebody wants to go to a conference, what they should do is make a request to to Gina or to the board and or the board, and the board can approve or deny it. <laughs> yeah, but so that's how you keep control over your budget. Though. But sometimes when things come up, yeah. Yeah, we have lots of uh, items that the budgets yeah. are all over the place. If right. you look at here, there's pluses and minuses all over the place. Oh, uh, yeah. I was just responding to yeah, yeah. Carl's question about keep having oversight. Yeah. 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 You can deny the travel. Yeah, the budget status is included also in every right. and again, like I said, there's pluses and minuses, there's positive sure. and negative variances throughout the right. entire sure. budget. Well, why don't we just hear about what happens and sometimes we're not going to be in a position to approve a request exactly yeah and you're going to approve the request with the guideline that we're just giving you yeah and then we'll see what happens yeah because there's not that much money at play here yeah it's yeah. and we're talking, we're talking a, couple a few hundred, hundred dollars for hotel right. stays as well so yeah and if we see things ballooning then we can okay yeah so just to summarize, we're asking you, Gina, to approve requests for staying overnight at conferences. We're expecting that this will be this year for a couple of different conferences. Yeah. Uh, and we're asking you to report to us uh, after you've approved each request. Is, is that what we're doing? That's probably what's going to have to happen. But if there's a big request and we have right before site board meet, we could throw it on there. And yeah. You know, but if it comes in between these, we're pre-approving it. Yeah. Okay. She's going to approve it if it seems reasonable. We're going to trust her. Go from there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Good. Okay. So let's get back to our municipal assistant candidate interview. I think she is here. She's so here. I think she stayed outside. But I saw so her. we got to go into executive session. We need to go into executive session. Yeah. So if, if you want to go into executive session, and Judith, you do have a, a question or want to revise a question, I think we can also take a few minutes to do that if you would like. Absolutely. Um, yeah. I move that we go into executive session to discuss the personnel matter. Perfect. Yeah. Second. All the favor, please ask. Aye. 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 How long is it? Uh, coming out of executive session. You're all set. And you do have some action. Yes. Um, would you like me to make a motion? Yes. I move <clears throat> that we authorize the town administrator to make an offer for the municipal assistant position at $25 an hour to the person we just interviewed pending the results of the background check that is now underway. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Now I appear to have it that you have. Motion passed. Okay. Uh, we're gonna move on to the next item. Allocation of ARPA funds, um, CD5. So we're just talking about the money that we would like or not, not to see the yep. to see if I would, which is pending on discussion we had on the next or last deal. Anyone? Yes, yeah. good. Um, are we going to be talking about the language of the agreement? First, we got to decide what we're going to do. We, we, have, we never came up with an amount. 
And and we want to talk about the language, the agreement. Uh, the agreement with CV5? Yeah. Yeah. We've yeah. received feedback and language from right. both the town attorney and, oh. and Bonnie. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Bonnie yeah. from planning also oh. sent quite a bit of. Uh, oh, I saw that she had sent something, right. Yeah. But, uh, and so my, my point is right. if we're going to be talking about the contract itself, then I would move that, um, and I, that that be in um, executive session because having right. in public um, our conversations may disadvantage us in our negotiations with CB Fiber. And that's pursuant to 3 VSA 313 paragraph A1A. Yep, uh, I agree. And uh, wondering what we can talk about in an open session before we do that. I thought that I didn't know that we had come up with the amount of money because we, we have, right. We, have we also, it's also the amount of money, there's a blank in the contract, but there's also a lot of, um, there are two, well, anyway, there's some language in the contract that, um, and there's also an attachment to the contract that um, I'm not sure if it all says what we want it to say. So, um, anyway. Wait a minute. Okay, so the later back. And it's a minute back. conversation. <laughs> so we want to have this on the agenda because we can leverage every dollar. That Absolutely. Our What's that? No, I'm, I'm agreeing with you. That's the purpose yeah. of it. Right. We, we can leverage every dollar from our with matching money from some entity with the state. Well, that, that's, that's what we talked about last time. And right. Judith, you requested some documentation yeah, on that. And do we have that confirmed that, yeah. that uh, our funds will be matched? We got that back from whoever it was. I read. Did you see it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah you I sent it. Yeah, I yeah. it. Yeah. And, and I, I don't recall. Is there a ceiling? Oh, no, it's millions. It's 15 million or something to have all together. Yeah. One million per town or something. For There's a lot of money for CV. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was, we're not even going to come close yeah. to the cap. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So then. And the September question, 15th is the deadline. Exactly. And then, but the thing is that we were, we had 240 uh, underserved households. And the question is, how many of those households are actually going to take advantage mm -hmm. of the hookup? And that when we, money, yeah, we did the math, right? We were coming up with it was sixteen hundred or dollars a hookup, mm -hmm. so sixteen hundred, and then you multiply that times was it sixteen hundred? I thought it was closer to twelve, but probably. it was it was around four hundred twenty six thousand, I believe, to get the entire town. So what was discussed last time was that the town contributed to thirteen, and it was matched, and you would get to the four twenty six. But then I forget who asked the question. Of how many people, but that's assuming everyone oh, signs 40, up for fiber. Mm -hmm. And they said that the state has come up with about 45% of households that sign up. Did a survey. When right. you did that math, right. we got back down to about the hundred thousand dollar figure exactly. that I think the select board had discussed previously mm -hmm. as a potential. Right, but the um, danger is if we allocate too much to the ARPA money, then what happens to that money? I think it would disappear. I think if it does not fit the ARPA criteria, I think. Once we allocate the money, the money is gone. But the money can only go to the underserved Correct. And there's another place that that money can go is to nonprofits. Mm -hmm. But the question was, was it underserved nonprofits? Right, right? Or is it just nonprofits? I think they said all nonprofits, I believe. You don't remember? Met, met the criteria. I thought we were uncertain about that last time. I remember they were uncertain about it. Do you remember that, Judith? Yes. Yep. Underserved nonprofits or just nonprofits in general that we can allocate that article money to. I think that was uncertain. That was the question. Yeah. She kept saying we can do the town library. That doesn't help us. But we have we identified some nonprofits like the highway department's nonprofit, the schools are nonprofit, the fire station's a nonprofit. Well, the fire station is a nonprofit. The other and uh, Twin Valley is a nonprofit. We don't have a nonprofit. I mean, it's a non. It's, it's a municipality. No, the fire department is a. Oh, it's, oh, it's on its own, right? Yeah, it's yeah. Not it's not its own. Own. Garage is part of the municipality. The Twin Valley is a nonprofit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can, can I ask? 
Can yeah. I could ask yeah. a question? Who prepared Appendix 1? Was that prepared by CV Fiber or was that prepared by us or our attorney? Uh, CV Fiber. Okay. All right. Because last time when we were chatting, um, it was recommended or discussed that in addition to the underserved folk, we can also identify other uses, and that could be inc specifically included in the appendix. And mm -hmm. so this is where we would put, you know, the school, the library, or we don't have a library, but school, um, any, anywhere else. But this is just some generic language that it appears that CB Fiber put in there. So if this is something we want, we would need to craft specifically what other entities would qualify for um, the hookup. And if I can, I have a number of questions about the document, but the biggest one I have relates to the um, whereas clause, which precedes the agreement, and it's on page two. And it says, whereas the contribution by the town will directly reduce the amount of C, the amount CV fiber will need to borrow and thereby increase affordability by decreasing subscriber fees. I yeah. thought the purpose of this was to connect, I'm using the wrong terminology, but to connect those underserved households. That's not yeah. what this says. This says that our contribution is going is going to offset CV Fiber's burden in in all that it does, not necessarily tied to the town's underserved homeowners being hooked up. Yeah, but doesn't that come out of the? I mean, it just comes out of the budget figure that they have. They have a budget, and part of the budget is the underserved homeowners. And maybe that's what it should say, and not that it's going to um, offset what they need to borrow. Um, but, but we've talked about this with CV Fiber before, and that's just, that's what they said: is that the more money we give them, the less they have to borrow. It's very simple language. But they saying. would have to find some way to designate that that money, that savings, was targeting the underserved public. It is so right? because they cannot use our money for anything else. That's why that, we have to make sure they don't use it for some, something else. And so this, what I'm saying is that that language I, is not sufficiently oh. narrow or specific to satisfy our requirements for you know, right. funding. And so you, uh, so represent, as represented by uh, the, the woman who talked to us about the program last time. Um, okay. So. So I think the scenario you're talking about, Judith, if I understand you correctly, is that CV Fiber could say, hey, we didn't get any money from the town to help out with these connections. It's a responsibility of every homeowner there to pay these connection fees. And therefore, it would not have uh, an effect on how much they have to borrow or the fees for everyone else. Does that make sense? Well, it's 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 subscriber fees throughout CV Fiber, not limited to the town of East Montpelier, and that's. Um, oh, is that is it, that limited to East Montpelier? That's a, that's a good question. It, 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 it is. I thought it was when they talked to us. They would limit. It, it's it would, supposed that's to. That's subscriber fees. Yeah, it's supposed to, but again, um, for purposes of this contract and the paragraph that precedes the agreement, I think that we need to be clear that the town contributions are going to offset the um, cost for hookups or whatever the terminology is for underserved East Montpelier households and those purposes outlined in appendix one, you know, and we outline what other uses or users qualify under appendix one. So are you, would you suggest that we strike that paragraph then, Judith? No, I think we need a paragraph, but it, I think it needs to tie into what we, what it's our understanding those funds are being used for. And, okay. um, and, and those funds are being used to offset um, the cost of 
hooking up or whatever the word is, you know what I'm trying to say, um, mm -hmm. the underserved um, households in the town of East Montpelier. Mm -hmm. So it does. Yes. Blah, 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 blah. It does say CB Fiber has committed to using those matching funds in the town. It does say that in the paragraph. It's, four. it's that's paragraph four. That's not the introductory paragraph preceding the agreement. And that they're committed to working on it isn't the same as agreeing to do it. So um, uh, I have other suggestions. Um, I'm still on board with the idea of contributing funds to CV Fiber. I just think it's important that the document represent what the town intends the funds to be used for. So that includes drafting our own Appendix 1 and not and sub substituting that with the boilerplate that CV Fiber provided to us and just, um, you know, any other small tweaks um, that we have, including what I just identified. Um, so as a lawyer, as our town lawyer looked at this? Yeah, this is the one that you have where you have some red markings, but then I had followed, I had reached out to Bonnie. Um, at um regional planning and then sent a follow-up to her um because as much as i know other towns have committed funds to cb fiber to get the match i don't think anyone went to regional planning or at least certainly nothing went to her so i just got her feedback on thursday when i followed up with her again okay. and she sent quite a bit <laughs> of uh, yeah. comments um, because I think we kind of brought her the first opportunity to really look at what the towns were actually signing up Oh, really? For. No one else has had? No, when I reached out to her the first time, she said that she's aware that towns have been committing funds, but her comment was that they were doing so without asking any questions. So, oh, okay. um, and she did tell me that the LCT would likely tell us to reach out to the town attorney, which I did. And she actually loved Carl's language and tweaked it ever so slightly. I sent him what Carl's initial draft was. And um, that's this one here. That's the one with the red. The red one. And the one you have that has blue. It looks like this, for example. Part six. Reporting and identification. One, two, three. So the first, I don't know how much you put in the pack. Did you put the whole thing? Mm -hmm. So it looks like this at the top. Uh, could I, um, when it, I'm just, can I ask yeah. a question? When is our next meeting? We have at least one more meeting before the September 15th deadline. Is that correct? Yeah, the 12th. Okay. Well, um, let, here's the time for the agreement, but let's try to come up with an amount. Yeah, I knew the agreement may likely take us a little more time. Right, but let's talk about the amount. Okay. So, so we kind of came up with the thought that the 100,000 is going to be a good enough. Now, we can do the math on it quickly. We should. We don't even remember how much it was per household. It's 1650. It's actually That's what I Okay, 1650. And you're saying, and you were saying that the 40, state estimate is only 40% of the underserved households. No, it's 45. She said it was 45. When I did the math during the last meeting, it got us, I think, to like 96,000. Okay, so that's per, that's. Yeah, and the hundred thousand. That's without uh, the Twin Valley Senior Center, for example. Mm -hmm. Right. It's no hookups, but those hookups would they be the same amount of money? That's a blanket estimate that they, I think, calculated across probably all towns. It's an average, probably. Yeah. So we don't know when they're planning to string fiber by the senior center right now. We heard that oh, consolidated has yeah. fiber going by them right now, but. That's the, cost prohibited by the node yeah. to hook up to is so far away there's tens of thousands of dollars. Uh, but we don't know what CB fibers plans are to go by there. It might also be tens of thousands of dollars to string a special line by there. Yes, it would depend on what electrical poles, you know. Yeah, but wait a minute. If it's underserved, it, we're not paying the line or box, we're just paying the hook. Well, see, the underserved parts of East Montpelier, according to their map, are in the northwest part. Oh, not, not no. down route two? No, no. So that would be a special line if they're underserved. Or it, could, they're be, not underserved or it could be part of the trumpet yeah. line that they build. And they yeah, but I don't get, is a non-profit underserved? 
I don't, I don't understand. Is it? Well, I, I think we're working on the assumption for now, which we need to double check since we, we haven't right. done that, that nonprofits don't have to be called underserved to qualify. To qualify. But I have a right. That's what we're trying to figure out. Right. Right. Because if you came up, if you, if you have the number of the 240 to 120, you multiply it by 1650, it's 198,000. So if we get a, give them 100,000 and we get another 100, mm -hmm. matching is perfect. But has anyone talked to U32 in the elementary school to find out what their capacity is right now? And do they need more fiber quickly? Right. So that, that's something we should do. Oh, but let's figure it out if they're underserved, if they qualify for it, if they're right. not underserved. Right. Right. We don't know that. That's a, that's a good question. Does any nonprofit qualify? <laughs> For the use of the ARPA funds, but the whole time. The schools might have Comcast, they might have 50 megabytes per second, right. and they and might not well qualify. Gig. Yeah, I, I don't know. So we need that. Has CD, how do we get this information? Has CD Fiber, it would seem to me that CD Fiber would be doing an audit of the town to know who is what, where. I don't know how to go about getting this information. I honestly don't have time to be calling the schools to ask mm -hmm. what they have or don't have. Mm -hmm. So, CB Fiber, they know. CB, we need to ask CB Fiber what the connection. Well, first of all, we need to determine where is the priority in town for us to make sure it's served quickly and with gig fiber. And uh, then we can ask CB Fiber, okay, is this you know an easy thing because you're stringing fiber right by them anyway, or is this a hard thing and it's going to cost forty thousand dollars per connection? I think that's. You know, when I asked these questions before, because when I did speak to Janelle, the very first time I spoke with her, yeah. she didn't send me the map initially, and then I asked about the map. So these were the types of questions I was asking that I was not getting yeah. clear answers to. And I don't, so I don't know that they know. Because I said these are the types of questions I thought that the select would yeah. be asking. Yeah. So I don't know what level of detail the audit. I was a bit surprised at the limited information that was coming back. I was just told that most towns are giving between thirty and 50000 Yeah. And that's what I was, that's the guidance essentially I left that call with. It sounds like they're doing it without hard information. They're just off the top. They don't even have the contracts worked out, right? In a satisfactory way. Sorry, right? That's the sense I got from the initial conversation I had because the same questions you're asking now is what I was asking. Yeah. And essentially, the only information I really received back was the map that I gave you all at the last meeting with the little red dots on it. So, Maybe we can do the due diligence, check in with the schools, see what they have, see what they want. Um, check in one more time with CB Fiber. They'll probably say, we can't tell you how much it's going to cost to connect those. And then we can figure out the next meeting what we're going to do. Would Bonnie answer the question about the nonprofit underserved? And again, going back to attachment one, I mean, that's a good question, Seth, but I think that we can identify the purpose of these funds in terms of the unused households. Looking at their boilerplate, for example, which is a appendix one, excuse me, they identify connecting households and connecting community facilities. It's kind of a generic listing of places. So if we want to include U32 or the elementary school or whatever, um, perhaps we could include that there, but we would need to specify it. And so I think when I would recommend we modify that paragraph I talked about to specifically identify the um, um, underserved households and other um, entities or um, community facilities as outlined in Appendix 1. But we need to create the P Appendix 1. But in order to create Appendix 1, we need to know whether these public um, entities need the assistance for the connection or not. Um, and I agree with you whether or when they will be connected. Mm -hmm. that, that sounds reasonable. Could we just take a break right now and ask our road foreman? The public works garage is one of the possibilities here. What sort of internet connectivity is there right now? And uh, what would you find desirable if it's not uh, at your level right now and why? At the town garage? The town garage, yep. Yeah, we don't have any Wi Fi. We don't have any internet at all. We just okay. do it all off of uh, the cell phone data. 
Okay, so you use your personal cell phones as Wi Fi hotspots or? The, nope, the town garage phone has uh, internet on that if you need anything. And I use the iPad and cell phone for email. So. You have DSL via the, the landline? Is that what I'm understanding? We don't have any internet at the shop other than what we can use on our phone. They don't use a landline, they use a cell phone. I see. Okay. The town garage phone is a cell phone. Got it. Okay. So um, I don't know like, what may be available there. So it looks right. like the community, I mean, according to appendix one, we can hook up those things that we're talking about. Um with our phone. It looks, looks like it. It's just that. That's that's, again, that's their boiler. Again, that's CV Fiber's boilerplate. You know, for us to determine whether and what um, we'd want to put there. But I, I would want the confirmation. You know, that it's okay. But um, anyway, yeah. yeah, yeah. But we also have this um, this paragraph uh, or this language that Jim Barlow has helped us construct, saying, "Hey, if you spend if you spend it on something that's not legal for ARPA funds." We get to that back for you. Yep. So, no, I, I agree that we definitely need that language in there. I, I, yep. So if we put something in appendix one that it turns out doesn't qualify for ARPA funds, then it's on them. Mm -hmm. I think. If they agree to that, um, have they seen the indemnification modifications made by Jim or we haven't sent our redraft back to them yet? No, I have not sent anything back to them. Okay. Um, I would make a suggestion um, because we've got some additional, I'm sorry, I've got something in my eye and it's driving me crazy. Um, we've got some additional information to obtain or additional work to do. Um, I would be willing to make comments to the agreement on things that I've seen and share them with the group or the attorney or both um, that I think might make this a better document for the town. That's actually what I was going to suggest that mm -hmm. maybe one to two board members consider. <laughs> it's going to take some time to dig through, you know, again, Bonnie provided a lot more feedback than what I, <laughs> what I would have expected yes. Um, yes. to dig, which uh, were very good and I yes. uh, really appreciate the comments. Yes. Um, but I think that it would be helpful if one or two of the board members, mm -hmm. you know, and, and even if that includes a conversation with CB driver directly as well. Yeah. Because like I said, you guys are asking the questions that I asked her right. when I talked to her a month or so ago that, you know, I thought a select board would want to know before determining how to commit funds. So sure. I okay, like so this idea. I just got one uh, comment to make about committing funds. If we commit a hundred thousand dollars to it, it's going to be pretty close to what is going to work. And if it's going to be a little bit more money because the community center or whatever we have in it, that's not a big deal because that's money that's just going to come out of their budget. We're not paying for that. They they can contribute that, or CV Fiber will pay for that, or whatever. It's just that we need to come up with a certain amount of money so we can get that matching money. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be pretty close to the hundred thousand just by doing the math. And you're not going to get any closer than that because you know why? You don't know how many people are going to sign up. Mm -hmm. You have no idea. Mm -hmm. We're going by funny numbers that somebody generated on a poll. Okay, it could be 51%, it could be 53%, it could be 35%. That's why most towns have erred on the lower side. Yes. They didn't want to give them too much money because they have no idea how many people are going to sign up. Yeah, and then the risk is if you give them too much money and then they can't find enough sources that are eligible to use it on. Right, we have to fight to get the money back. Exactly. Well, yeah. So, yeah. It would, so, once you committed it, they just committed it. Exactly. It would just be lost. So the hundred thousand dollars is pretty. It's pretty hard. Actually, I want to push back against what you just said, Gina, because I think the language that Bonnie suggested uh, was that if uh, they haven't committed the money by a couple of months before our deadline for committing the money, then we get the uncommitted oh, their back. Yes, you're right. Yeah. Oh, we do. She was, she was adding some that. information to protect us from that right. because. The risk is with ARPA, there is a that deadline. Once the funds are allocated, at the point that you allocate, you say that your funds are there, that's that's where you've allocated them. Yeah. That's it. So yeah. if you don't spend for those allocations the way I'm understanding it today, 
then that money, it, that's it. You said you were going to use it for X. If you didn't use it for X, you can't shift it to Y at that point. So yeah. she suggests that we have a list of shovel ready projects that we haven't committed the ARPA funds to, but would qualify for it. So that if a couple months before the deadline for allocating the money, they still haven't said, okay, these are the households we're going to serve. This is how we're going to serve. So you have a little time to do. Then we have some time to so I get the money back from them and, and say, okay, we're going to allocate it to these things. Okay, so, but we do have another meeting coming up. So we've yeah. got other stuff to go over. But I think that we need to think about that thing. Because that figure is important to get the maximum. Mm -hmm. You know, I think the hundred thousand is probably a fair number. It probably, is. especially if we can get some of the back if they don't. Yeah. Yeah, so we would money. put in a hundred thousand, and then it would get matched at fifty percent. At hundred percent. So why would it get doubled? Yeah, but why wouldn't we? I mean, if we're thinking that the, am I doing the math wrong? No. It's not about we're thinking thousand. at a total of 200. Yeah, okay. and we're going to get 100 of it. What, what would, so okay. if you split that in half. So we're just trying to come up with a semi accurate figure. Okay. It's just a guessing game. Perfect. We're, gotcha. we're using the data that we have to come up with yeah. a figure, and I think 100,000 is pretty fair. Okay. And, and what might end up happening is uh, you know, maybe more people subscribe than that 45 exactly. cents. And then, yeah. then either CB Fiber uses their own fund exactly. for that, or they say, Okay, household member, if you want to connect, you're going to have to pay X amount. Yeah, I, I don't really see the risk to committing that. As long as we can plot back if they're not. We can if within a couple months yes. if they haven't committed. Okay. If they, they don't know at that point yes. how many households are going to hook up. Yeah. yeah. Right? So they're going to have to have a process where they say, okay, yeah. by this deadline, if you want a free hookup or a right. highly discounted hookup, you have to. Commit, but, but I, I want to leverage as much of the ARPA money for the free money as much as I can. Yeah, yeah so, absolutely. So I think that's what we you know, need to do. And we don't have to do it at this meeting, but I think we need to prepare to do it at the next meeting without a lot of discussion because we've got to go over this legal document and this right. takes a while. Right. And it's, it's worth restating at every meeting where we have about this, I think, that we are committed to a democratic process to look at the overall commitment of our ARPA funding and that we are confident that the town would sign off on 100,000 or so for underserved uh, uh, households because better internet is such a great uh, such a great issue here and has been for a long time. Yes, it is. I have received inquiries and I respond with that the board is looking at this, but that yeah. the board is trying to go into this with eyes wide open, right. um, which is why we have not, the, the select board has so not committed funds. When is the next one be? The 12th. So one question I had was when it comes to the legal documents, I don't know where CD Fiber is going to have to take our recommended or our suggested edits to their legal document. I'm assuming they're going to have to take it to their legal team. Right. Do we want to attempt to get something to them before that meeting on the 12th? Yes. So yeah, that's idea. Yeah. We so, want that thing ready. So Judith, you're you're volunteering to work on it. I'm vol I'll volunteer to work with you on it. Yeah, and but I think we'd want the whole board to say yay to it before we pass it along to or at least you know have an opportunity to review it before we pass it along to cv fiber so no, i think you need to get it going what unless you just want just if you email, want to, like, email no, no, it, what i'm saying is well. having a you know a brief special meeting just to review the changes that carl and i make it you know incorporating bonnie's contributions and our revisions so that it's not Carl and I sending, so that the whole board looks at the document we're sending to CV Fiber is my point. We could, or do you want to do by email? I just want. I, mean, I, email. I, email. I would email. like to see it, but I think email is just fine. I think uh, it's going to be impossible to have a special meeting. So yeah, I don't know. Okay. So yeah. I think just in terms of open meeting, the way we handle that is we could do it one of, of two ways. I mean, this is, as you were indicating earlier, Judith, this is plausible to have an executive session for, uh, and therefore we could say we're going to have our executive session you know, via email. Um, the, other, the other way to do it is uh, just to say, um, Judith and I will send it out to each of you three on the select board and ask you to send your comments back to us individually. I guess that gets us about three people um, <laughs> if you do that. So I think, I think we need to uh, go into executive session. You for, Final question, at least if that would work for me. Okay. If you, I that, if you want to try yeah. that. Like and, and then, intermediaries. Yes. Yeah, and then, I, and then I, you I, would, I'm sorry. I think I, if, just if I could finish, and then, and then um, if, if it looks like we need to have a special meeting to do it, we, we would have a special meeting. 
Um, I think in order for us to convey the um, that we are forwarding to CB Fiber the re the agreement that the entire board wants to convey, the entire board needs to weigh in on it, and that should be by a deliberative session. I don't think we can use Gina as a media mediator. I think we should acknowledge that all of this is kind of um, internal deliberation regarding contract negotiation, which is appropriate for an executive session, and that we'll be doing that through email. That, yes, that's what I was suggesting as one of the alternatives. So that's the alternative I vote for. <laughs> uh, so, so in the email that you send out with the contract, you're going to say that up front? I, I think we should say Otherwise. in this meeting, that we are will be um, deliberating on the contract language through executive session, and we will use email in order to do that. So okay. I think we would I just want to be clear: we can't make any decisions in executive session. So what that means is either we have a special meeting to affirm uh, sending the contract to CB Fiber, or we just say we're having an internal work session and we're going to send these documents on without having formally endorsed them because that's what we'll do on September 12th well, that, which I think is a viable thing. Yeah, well, that's, yeah. Right. yeah. right. That's, that's fine. fine. Okay. That's fine. Okay. okay. So we just said it in open session that this is what we're going to do. That, that's right. right. And uh, we, we need to make a motion to, to do that I think. And I just, I just want to make sure that we're dotting our I's and crossing our T's. Um, is David Delsor still there? I don't see him, but maybe I can't see everybody. Can you look at the person? He is. He is not. He is there. He is. He is. I'm sorry. Okay. So, so David, I just want to make sure that um, I, you're, you're not our lawyer, uh, but I just want to make sure that you're. Um, do you have any objections to this process from a, a public point of view? I mean, I think that, you know, at the end of the day, if you're going to commit funds, you know, through a contractual arrangement with CV Fiber, then there needs to be a board vote. In, and you're right that you can't do that in executive session. So, uh, you know, it, it, as long as you get around to saying whether it's $100,000 or some other number, this is the number we're sticking into that agreement that we're committing to on and behalf of the town, um, oh. that, that the whole yeah. board does need to be behind it or a majority yeah. of the yeah, so our, our plan, under, as I understand it, is that we would have that board vote on uh, September 12th at our meeting scheduled for that day, and that the document that you're voting on would be a public record at that point. That sounds but, good to me. I'm yeah. sorry. Okay. Thank you. This, this is, if I may, we are yeah. providing CV Fiber with the revised draft of what we're representing the board would agree to. And part of that document is the amount of money. We're gonna be putting in a number and that's all going to take place prior to September 12th. So if that's going to happen, we need a forum or, an, or uh, a method by which the entire board can say yay or nay to what we're actually giving to CV Fiber. Well, see, that's okay. So that I have a different understanding than that, Judith. I thought we said just a few minutes ago that what we would send to CB Fiber was not something that the full board had agreed to, but just something that we've discussed. This is what looks good to us right now, and we'd like your feedback on it. So, draft. Yeah. But it's a draft. Yeah. We're representing that this is what we want in the document. So we as a board want this in the document. So we as a board need to say, this is what we want. And we haven't done that. You and I are going to be going through with some suggestions for what should be in the document. But the entire board hasn't signed on to that. But wouldn't they do that in the September 12th meeting when we have the draft post out? We we would we would, we would do the finalize yeah at that September twelfth yeah. meeting yeah so we have to finalize the contract <laughs> but we are representing we Carla and I will be acting as agents yeah. for right. let me continue are acting as agents for the board that the board the town is representing that this is what we want so we are agents for the town that if CV Fiber said yes we would sign the agreement. But we don't know that yet because the board hasn't said yes to the language that Carl and I are going to come up with. 
Right. So for that reason, I don't think that we will represent to CV fiber that the board will absolutely accept this. I think we, we say to CV fiber, the board has looked at this um, and we haven't heard any objections to this language right now. We'd like to hear what you say about it. So we can't represent to CV fiber that this is the language the town wants. Why would CV why would CV fiber negotiate against itself and come back with line by lines, yay or nay, to what you and I convey to CV Fiber. Well, if they don't want to do it, then, then that's their problem. But uh, we're offering them a couple hundred thousand dollars, yeah, so right. I think they cooperate. It's a community. That's, I'm just, you know, from a third party perspective, which is how agencies are determined, the third party here would be CV Fiber is getting a message from two of the board members. Here's the language that we're looking at. What mm -hmm. say you? They are yeah. going to receive that as the town wants this language, but the town hasn't made that decision yet. The select board hasn't made that decision yet. I am right. identifying a concern or a problem with the process you're proposing. If the rest of the board's comfortable with that, fine. But I think the board in transferring or relaying or authorizing its agents, Carla and I, to transmit this, you're saying that what we're transmitting, you're okay with, and that hasn't happened. When do we say that? Oh, we can't say that in executive session. We can't say that in executive session. No. We can make edits. You can suggest edits. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so we'll say, okay, we've, we've heard from board members um, right. in executive session, and we haven't ratified this formally in public, uh, but we've got a pretty good sense that the people like this, but we aren't committing to it. We will come in on the 12th. Yeah. Or, yeah. Yeah. Or, or, or we will discuss it again on the 12th. We'll talk. discuss it on the 12th. Yeah. yeah. Do you see anything wrong with this agreement? Yeah. Yeah. And if they don't like it, uh, then. I don't care. Why would they, 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 they not like it? No. Why oh, would they not like it? Yeah. Well, they might try to change a few words. Sure. And then we've got to look at it again at the meeting. Exactly. Right. Exactly. And we can say, yeah, well, I don't know. We haven't run this past our mean colleagues on the board. <laughs> <laughs> I see it as a back and forth negotiation. Yeah. So how I look at it. I, I totally agree with you, but it's between the board and CB Fiber, not Carl and I and CB Fiber and the board. So we're either acting for the board or we're not. But no one else sees that problem. Um, I don't want to stand in the way. I just, it, it so here's a hypothetical. We, prov we provide them with language. They make, so, you know, they say this is great, and then it's presented to the board. If the board yeah. says no, we want these revisions, we've got to then go back to CB Fiber and say, oh, our board doesn't like A, B, and C. They want these that's changes. Fair. Okay, so that's worst case scenario. Yeah, I finish, may I finish my yeah. sentence. Yeah. CB Fiber then says, wait a minute, why did you present us with this proposal if now you're taking it back? What, why did, and you're right, if CB Fiber really wants this money, Maybe they'll sign off on anything we say. Who knows? But I'm just identifying a slight wrinkle in the plan. Well, thank you for doing that. But we are entrusting you and Carl as being two bright legal minds that, <laughs> can, that will come up with a satisfying, a satisfactory contract. We will suggest edits when we see the contract in our emails. We'll look it over. Us three are not the bright legal minds here. We have a lot of common sense. So we're <laughs> entrusting you with this. And I can't imagine that we're going to come up with very many edits. We're very small if there's going to be anything. And by the time you get the document together and bring it to CV Fiber, I think all of us are going to be pretty happy with it. Mm -hmm. We and trust you. We trust you. I we trust, trust you. you. <laughs> and if nothing else, we can have Janelle here on the 12th. And uh, we can talk about yeah, it. I, I, don't, I, I understand what you're saying. Mm -hmm. And thank you, Drew. Yes. But I also see it as a process moving forward that by the 12th is going to be pretty worked out. Yeah. I think David Delcor had a hand raised and they put it down. And that's oh, he did? Trying to get recognized. Yeah, I was, just, I was just, you know, if the deadline is the 15th and you're meeting on the 12th, is there really any reason that you need to provide them a copy with this in advance and of the 12th? We just want to make sure everything is worked out. 
Okay. We want to give them a chance to consult with their legal team on the changes that we've made on the, the draft that they've provided us. Right. Okay. All right. Thank you. We're just doing our due diligence, basically. And, and a couple of our members' suggestions. So basically, can we move on or any, anybody's not comfortable or comfortable? Because I found like it. I'm, we'll that I'm, I'm comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. comfortable. And, and, I, and I think everyone needs to think about that figure of 100,000. Mm -hmm. So we don't have to spend too long on our next week. Yeah. We spent okay. about 10 minutes on this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we sure did. Um, okay. So the next item is the county road project update. And I think Dr. is going to give us some information. Yeah. Uh, the Blue Mountain Construction, uh, trucking and excavating, I guess is what it is. Uh, they ran into some problems when they were down in Brattleboro on a job. They had one employee walk off the job, which was one of their head operators. Uh, mm -hmm. So they filled that seat with another employee, uh, moved on to the next job, working their way towards East Montpelier, and he got in a motorcycle accident and broke his leg. Oh. So they were delayed again. So... Their plan is to show up next week, midweek, and I don't believe they're actually going to start digging in front of Morris Farm until after the Labor Day weekend. So that put the paving off, which is what no one wants to hear, including myself. Mm -hmm. So with that, we decided we might as well get our work started. Um, so we did the Hooper, we started the Hooper Hollow uh, culvert today. And uh, I'm pretty comfortable saying we'll have the road open at the end of the day tomorrow. We actually have both pieces of pipe already laid in the road. So the old pipe's out, we're down to the new depth that the new culvert had to be, and the new pipe is laid in. Uh, the bottom band is underneath it, the top band needs to go on it, and it needs to get just aligned just a little bit as the band gets tightened up. Uh, so hopefully by the end of the day tomorrow, the county road will actually be back open. It won't be all the way through until Thursday like we had originally planned. So. Um, so that one, that's actually coming along very nicely. Uh, and the, so like I said, with pipes and the paving going on there, um, they tried to contract someone to do chloride way back right when they ground it and they couldn't find anyone to commit to the amount that they needed on the road in a timely manner so they had finished up on thursday and when wednesday came around of the next week and the whole thing was rolled down pretty flat there was no way chloride was really going to help at that point the, there was no virtually no dust at that point um and so i told them hold off on it being the job was already had climbed significantly in cost um which was about a i think somewhere around sixty thousand dollars in savings yeah, sixty two thousand so, um, of course, every good salesman, uh, Tyson, he has thoughts of what we might want to consider that money. If, if we are already considered it allotted money, do we want to add to pavement? Do we want to do this or that with it? Um, I, I'm open to what you guys' thoughts are. Um, there is one thing that wasn't really added that has come to mind, um, and that is that if you did want to spend that extra 60,000, there is a kind of an option C that I haven't mentioned. And that is that we could do all the aprons. So we could do a new apron, a nice long one on Templeton, a nice one on Powderhorn, a nice one on Cummings, because that one is really in rough shape. It's been bad for a long time. Um, so there's some other places there where, and those three right there might eat up 40, 50,000 by the time you go 50, 60 feet on each one of them. Um, the one on Powderhorn is not in bad shape by any means. The, that's probably the best out of any of them. The one on Templeton is completely gone, and the one on Cummings is very bad. So. Would they do both the, the wire Cummings? The both entrances? No. There? It, it would just be bad. the straight shot to the city. Yeah. 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 So, Leslie, yeah. when I was reading, you know, option A, B, and now you bring C, I don't really know what the best option would be, not having any civil engineering back. Or hundred thousand dollars, or can you explain these options to us? It's a thickness. 
But why? I mean, I guess it would just wear better over time. And what about option? The other option you want to be the difference. The difference is where you pay it off the main roads into the dirt road. Okay. So the entrance on Cummings Road onto the yes. county road yes. is yes. horrible. Yes, it is horrible. Rough, rough. Yes, it is so rough. if you put pavement in 50 feet, you have a better surface when you're coming up the okay. county road. Thank you. It doesn't have a bunch of potholes on it and all kinds of stuff. And what that was this? What was the 60 odd grand to option? Was that? No, that's it's going to cost 40 to 50. Oh, we're saving about sixty-two thousand. There are three things. One was hundred grand for the extra inch of. Oh, it was for half an inch. It was sixty grand. Or something you might. Okay, that's or thank you. Okay. Someday we're going to let you answer the question, Guthrie. Yeah. <laughs> well, sorry about that. <laughs> so yeah, to me, the quarter inch isn't worth the sixty thousand, in my opinion. Um, mm -hmm. If you're going to go thicker, then go thicker. A quarter inch isn't going to be a huge factor um but and there's about 12 to 14 inches of ground asphalt there right now um when we dug that today there was 12 inches of ground asphalt and there was actually an inch or two of asphalt in the bottom that wasn't even ground and they said they had that in a couple of the low spots uh, when they were grinding the road so i think there's plenty of base on the road to keep it together for the another 10 or 12 years at least um so i i don't think the three inches is that big of a problem i do think that generally with if asphalt hadn't taken a massive price increase if paving as a whole hadn't that we would be looking at the four inches saying well maybe that's not such a bad option after all um, but i i can say that that's i know that that's a big amount of money you don't want to throw out there so it yeah. And the other thing is, now that they're looking at paving more or less the first week of October, that we're going to maybe, there's a chance that the prices will come back down a little bit. Um, but that's, you have to work through all the material that was made during high fuel costs and whatnot. But they're slowly starting to come back down. So That's right. Hmm. So... I have a question about the coming road apron options. Um, <laughs> the option. Uh, I'm going to say options. Oh, be what? Because uh, the straight shot to county road is, in my observations, the more heavily used yeah. part of that Y there. However, the Y to the left there going north onto uh, county road, uh, that one is steeper and it's in worse shape and sometimes in the winter it's just so rutted that it's really hard to, to get up there and i'm wondering why you're suggesting that the straight shot only rather than that one to the north the the one to the north that you're talking about we don't even plow it in the winter um we we don't do any maintenance to it it is a nightmare from both directions with a plow truck and by the time you start to get up in there or you start to come out of there with a plow truck you've got a car trying to run you over already it's just mm -hmm. absolutely horrible. And that's mm -hmm. if you can swing the corner at the top because you're swinging to the right and your plow is trying to dump all the snow to the right. So more or less, when you leave the county road on that northern apron, your entire, all that snow from the road all the way up around the entire corner, you're already going straight before you start dumping any of the snow off your plow. It mm -hmm. literally will fill the plow so full that you won't even be able to go. Mm -hmm. So the only i think i've plowed it maybe three times in the last five years in the winter and usually you take the loader down and maybe clean it up with a pickup or something like that when it's absolutely horrible mm -hmm. um, but i if i had my way i'd just say don't do it at all don't it'd be great if the intersection were up the hill another 50 feet you could just do away with that whole that whole northerly apron um, mm -hmm. I, we've, we've talked it i believe we've talked in the past about um getting rid of the Y and just making a, a right angle intersection with County Road there. But uh, that would probably be a fairly expensive project, fair to say? Yep, fair to say. Uh, I think that you'll run into some fairly solid earth down in there a little ways too, yeah. mm -hmm. um, which more modern equipment deals with it a lot better than back when that road was originally put in either. So. Uh -huh. We wouldn't have to, probably wouldn't have to blast it. It would probably be able to jackhammer it out with a big machine. Uh, but uh that's probably not going to happen this year right right so let's let's discuss the money before we get in the weeds too much 
you know, we've got an extra 62,000 that was in the sort of in the budget, but not really in the budget because we're way over it. We could just cost that as a savings, take that as a savings, or we could put it into the aprons, or we could put it to the thickness of the asphalt, which we don't really need because if everyone understands the bowl magging, there's a foot of ground up asphalt already on the road. That's what bowl magging is, grinding up the asphalt. So we have a really good base. The three inches is quite adequate. Um, we have 62,000 that we didn't spend on fluoride. So what do you want to spend it on? We can spend it on aprons, we just count it as a savings. I honestly, sorry to interrupt again, but I honestly think if you did Templeton and Cummings, just those two, you didn't even worry about Powderhorn because I don't really think it needs it. Uh, I, I honestly don't think it would be more than a 30, 35,000. Um, and those around. would be nice long aprons. So that's what we do. That's what we should do. Is that a good idea? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. How do you determine what length of apron is the right length? <laughs> um, well, if you guys want to discuss that, you can. Uh, usually it's somewhere between 30 and 60 feet, depending on the angle. That's kind of one of the factors. Uh, if, if the road squares up pretty good, then <coughs> you can get away with a, a shorter one. Uh, it's nice to have all the wheels of your vehicle on asphalt when you're pulling out onto an asphalt road. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, it makes maintaining it a lot easier. Uh, the tracking of the salt off the road in the springtime it helps with all of that. Um, Plus the roads aren't getting damaged either if you turn it onto it because that's what happens when you come off the dirt road, they start spinning their tires, and they damage the side of the road. So this would preserve all the money you're investing in the county road in that area mm -hmm. by just adding on the paper. Speaking of the road too. Sorry, but it's a good thing. <laughs> it's a good thing. Okay. Yeah, it's a good thing. Uh, it's a good thing. So the idea is that you put the transition between the pavement and the asphalt at a place where there's a straight stop, whether in, in both directions, and therefore people are not going to be digging up either one of them too much with, with their wheels, with acceleration, as they make that transition. Am I getting that right? And it moves that transition point up the road a little farther as well, where you're going from an asphalt to a gravel road, which right. usually will create a pothole automatically. So if you have the opportunity to be able to put it into Cummings Road, meaning dig the road down eight, 10 inches and put the asphalt buried into the road and then resurface over the top out onto the new asphalt, you can kind of layer it in there as a new, as a new face to face and it will hold up pretty good most of the time. Um, Cummings Road will be a little bit tricky just because of the, the slope. Right. Okay, so I think we're on board. Yeah. With that aprons. For Cummings Road and Templeton. Yeah. Right. Do we need, need any more motion on that? No, I don't think we do, do we? I think we just need to get pricing, right? That's got I was gonna say, I, I yeah. 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 And then, okay. Uh, and then for, for and the then that will come to you as you know yeah. a change order. Okay. Yeah. And we'll we'll hear your recommendations about the length for each of those aprons at the time. It just happens. I think. Well, it's, 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 it's going to be the length specified. Yeah. If if they've got an extra two or three tons of material in the end of the truck, it's not like they're going to haul it away. They're just going to yeah. add onto the apron a little bit most every time. So. Okay. And okay. that might be four or five feet. Okay. So I'd just like to ask you a couple of questions about the project. Um, because I guess there's been a lot of complaints about Dawson potholes in the county road. Yeah. Flat tires is the latest hot topic. Flat tires. So, Dust was an issue for a while, but right. there was really one household. Okay. So are we just telling them that we're going to get to it as quick as we can and the culvert project's been delayed and blah, blah, blah? That's how we're handling it, correct? Or are you answering those questions yourself, or is that just coming into the town office? Gina or the town office have been answering all of that. I haven't actually been faced with any flat tires. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, For the most part, if there's, I'm not responding, of course, to all the people commenting on Front Porch Forum right now for anybody on Front Porch Forum. Um, but uh, for any calls, I mean, I got a call today. I mean, there's usually one or two a day. Um, just telling them I'm sorry, you know, that. Um, I mean, I, I don't know what people, the condition of someone's tire is. I mean, I've driven the road a lot yeah. myself. I have not had a flat tire. 
Um, my wife drove it last week, all five days back and forth, morning and night, um, because she was attending a class, never with a flat tire. Um, so, you know, I don't, I, and frankly, I come from a land of concrete. <laughs> so I've kind of been asking, I asked John when I got the first call the night of the fire department meeting, is this a thing that happens here? Because I frankly don't know. I mean, I, you know, I, and honestly, I come from a place where road construction is happening everywhere. It definitely does seem like we are dealing with a lot of people that are not used to a road being under construction. Unfortunately, I come from a place where the road is always under construction all the time. Um, I mean, they shut down a road, a major road in my town where I was from for a year and a half went by for construction. So we could do that. We it's could shut down it's not foreign to me, you know. So, you know, I don't really quite know. I mean, Guthrie laid the gravel because of potholes. You know, there were some, he not only, we only got actually one very rather polite call of the roads getting a little bumpy. Um, and the road crew really noticed that it was getting rough in certain spots. So that's why the gravel was, was put down. So, you know, I, you Somebody know, on Front Porch Forum today said that it was some kind of material, though, that it was some kind of granite shards rather than gravel. That yeah, they're calling it shards. Now. Okay, that's so the that's latest. Just, yeah. Okay, so that's just bump them then. Is that what you're saying, Godfrey? I saw you shake your head. <laughs> yeah, we didn't put any granite on the county road, and there's no pit <laughs> gravel on the county road. Okay. Uh, what was there was quarried ledge, okay. and, and it can be sharp. I'm not going to deny that at all. Um, but you'll never get anything to lay down as smooth on on a road like that where it's already a hard packed surface um, it we put some chloride to it got some water on it and then mother nature really helped us out which was awesome and that finally got it all to lock right up and pack down what i consider pretty much the best you're gonna get um, there's virtually no dust on it again and there are a few little strips of rocks in some spots and if you really pay attention to your wheels, where they're traveling, where most other traffic is traveling, you're not going to be in the loose stones. Um, today, we had the road closed, and I was mind boggled by how many people came all the way to the job site. Um, and then on the at the Templeton Road, uh, we actually had to put our road close sign up three times between 1030 and 130. It got taken out of the road completely. Wow. Uh, yeah. So, so that, do you think that um, I'll be, I mean, I just saw the front porch forum postings. It looked like I think I saw like five people said that they had flat tires. Is this something that that people can expect to happen, or is there something wrong with the tires or something? I'm just wondering. I, I do think that some of it is that there's probably some old tires out there. They're not very soft, and they don't take the the, the sharper stones well. Um, and it, they was people slowed down for like the first week and they are over it uh they are traveling 45 miles an hour still and it's anywhere where there's some gravel where it was rough there's definitely the if you move over into those loose stones you're going to be throwing stones up you're moving the stones when you start rolling the stones of your front tires you're going to be rolling onto stones that aren't laying flat anymore uh, so maybe people should know that they need to drastically slow down their speed on that road and maybe they can avoid. Well, the speed limit is 40 and I I don't like going more than 30, 35 max on it right now. Um, yeah. That's just my opinion. But. So maybe we could put that on front porch floor. And start drive it, slow. Is, uh, slow down. I am really hesitant to do that <laughs> given the calls and what's already happening on front porch floor. Oh, I think that's... that's Okay, so whatever happens, happens in that area. But I just want to ask you a question about the contractor that's going to put the goal. <laughs> Is he really going to be here and getting it done by September 1st and Labor Day and all that? I mean, because that is a crucial thing and it's got to get done before the paving gets done. Yes. And it sounds like I he's fully, I off. fully believe he will be here. If he's not here by the end of next week, then I'm probably going to go to Rygate and start driving equipment for him to get it here. So, really? it, I, it's I can't picture him not being here. So, and is there any? Do you think that any one of us should follow him and just say it's got to get done, or do you feel confident that you're pushing him hard enough so he will be? Here? I, I'm. He's aware of our uh, got to be out of the stream date, and he is aware that we had agreed to Morris Farm 
we'd be out of there by September 15th was last year. Um, so, and that would still give us two weeks of travel on those projects to get those vibrated back down, get the traffic packed in, right. Get those back to, an, back to the road grade that they should be. Um, okay, so I'm, just, I'm just wondering if you would want one of us to make a call to him to ensure that he's here. It's imperative he's here. But if, you're if, so if you guys want to talk to him, it's feel free. I'm, I'm just know. asking you. I'm asking you. If you, if you feel 100% comfortable, he's going to be here and confident. I won't bother um, suggesting that. But if you're thinking the guy needs a little more push, I'm willing to do that. But it's up to you. You your call. I'll, I'll give him a call again tomorrow. I've been talking to him about once a week. Okay. Um, and. And see where he's at. If if anything has changed, then I will for sure sick you guys onto him. Okay. Okay. Because I, I agree completely that we're on the other end of the time frame. Originally we were gonna be way early. Everything yes. was early. <laughs> yeah. But now it's imperative at this time. So keep keep in the middle or just myself if you want to. Give me a phone number and I will push it by if if necessary. Just like, just let me know. Okay. Anything else on that? I was just going. I, is there anything else that any of you come across? I'm looking through my notes. I think we covered it all. I think so. Thank you. Yeah, and uh, just keep us in the loop on the cost of the aprons and then also the cost of the whole project, of course, may change with the cost of oil. So we'll figure out how that happens. We'll see how that happens. Because I know that. Yeah. yeah. Can, can you just circle back, Judger? Can you clarify? Uh, Templeton Road, you said there's a road close sign there from Templeton going on to County Road. Is that correct? That we, closed, that we closed County Road at Templeton today. Okay, and what was the condition of County Road, the section that was closed? Was it ground up asphalt? It was closed because they were doing uh, the culvert work. Yeah, okay. That, that was why. But pe could people pass you while you were doing the culvert work? Was No. No, okay. It was, no. Hole. Right. It was oh. so nine what? and a half feet to the bottom of the hole. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So really? what they were doing is they were coming to the construction site and then finally they could get by and then turning around, but they moved the sign. Yeah, okay, thank you. And even with the signs up on the other end, they were driving all the way to the driveway before the job site. I mean, they were yeah. within 75 feet of the town pickup when they were turning around. Yeah. yeah. They didn't believe the sign, obviously. Yeah. They didn't believe the one at Center Road, and then they didn't believe the one at Barnes Road. <laughs> and they, they believed it when they couldn't get through. So. Right. <laughs> That's crazy. Okay, thank you. Wow. Okay. And we can either, if the board would like to authorize me to sign the asphalt fuel and labor cost adjustment and have a change order, that's the $194,510.94. Uh, and then we also, I also have a change order that is the cost reduction for eliminating the calcium chloride. We can either do those now or we can wait up three until I'm assuming pipe will be who would do the aprons. So we could wait I, and maybe. I don't know if Pike is going to be able to do the aprons or not. Okay. We will see. Okay. They they might contract it through someone else. That would be my guess. That's what they'll do. Okay. So I don't know if you want me to authorize to authorize me to sign these change orders that I received from Pike. Sure. And then the apron would be a separate separate issue. You know. Separate sure. It looks like. Later. Yeah. We may as well authorize it now. So we'll yeah. Those kind of are with you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I made the motion. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes have it. Anything else, Jeffrey? I think that covers my end of business. Jeffrey, okay. let me know if you get the road open tomorrow so I can call Michelle with the school. So that would certainly help them with school buses yeah. uh, starting because on Wednesday. Because Wednesday's first day. If she hasn't called you already, but <laughs> I know she knows how to find you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, she doesn't have a hard time finding me, and uh, Jen, who runs the busing company, she she found me. So 
<laughs> she found me Friday. She found me Sunday. <laughs> You're close contact with the school, so it starts on Wednesday. So yep. yeah, I, I I didn't want to send them a message and get their hopes up today. I know. So by yeah, midday tomorrow, I'll give them the good news that they'll be able okay. to go through. So we we can get to the county road uh, to the Morse's Sugar Shack by going down the center road and then up through to do you, that. You can get road. there. You can go up Center Road. You can go up County Road from Montpelier. It's not closed until Hooper's Hollow, technically. Oh, I'm bringing my... But if you need the detour to go around, if you were going to travel the whole length of it, you'd have to go Center Road to Templeton Road. Yeah. Right. Okay. All right. And right now, buses can get from downtown Montpelier to Morris Farm. The culvert road work that you're doing is, is north of Morris Farm? Yeah. Yep. It's north of all the other culvert work that's going to be done. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's in between Powderhorn and Cassavan. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank we you. Move on since we're now behind. Yeah. Yes, um, have a nice evening. Bye. <laughs> nice. Um, so now the update for the fire department. Is John going to give us that? Well, I provided you the financial. I see it. Yeah. That they provided to us. Yeah. And John wrote. They just they just had a few a few things they talked yeah. about. One one they just wanted to let us know that um, they still are continuing to get a, a pretty good number of COVID calls. I saw. Um, and they're and um and really the, the new variant is, is primarily I guess what what the calls are related to. And they said they were, they were kind of surprised there was a number of uh, rebound COVID calls. People, you know, getting thought they're over it and back with it again. So, um, they, and they did, and they also went on to say that they were spending a considerable amount of time doing disinfection and that sort of thing of their of their, of their units that they were using. So, they just want us to know that. Um, there, they also want to mention there were three recent structure fires in Cal's and Woodbury. Pretty major ones, and um, I guess this really allowed them to see that that everybody in the whole region short staff um, for volunteers, and that uh, what happens is that uh, what when like all of East Montpelier heads up, you know, to Woodbury um, to cover a call or Callis to cover a call, then Barry Town comes in and covers covers our our fire station, and then the same thing happens when Hardwick comes up and. You know, Woodbury goes out and everybody else. So, anyways, they're just saying that they're really short staffed now, um, and that um, they want to start proceeding with some plans to um, try to entice people to come back to, to work. You know, to, to volunteer and also to keep some of their current um, ambulance uh, EMS employees as well, and, and maybe bring on some new ones. So, we'll, we'll, I'll just mention that again later a little bit. Um, so they said mutual aid calls are going to increase because of the short staffing. They're going to get called to go to Berlin. They're going to get called maybe to go to Barrytown uh, or Plainfield due to a fire because they're so short staffed. Because before we had like 12 people going out on a call, now you get three. Mm -hmm. So there, so there's some issues there. Um, they want to begin a public campaign to acquire staff. So um, they, they are at, going to leave Acetown to um, consider increasing the, the firefighter stipends for going to the fires, going to meetings and things like that. Um, and they also want to increase the wage scale for the paramedics to retain the track new staff because they're competing with everybody else for this, for this basically the same people. Um, they, they said they're open, to, I, they're open to new ideas if somebody can think of some way they could get staff. No, there's a few, you know, there's kids out there, there's, there's students out there that are working um, in, in, in universities and colleges around who, who might be taking a healthcare degree or something. They say, you know, if you're interested in learning, you know, uh, about paramedics, show up. So, so they're, they're, they're open to new ideas that we can come up with. Um, the ambulance service finished uh, 7,000 under budget, and due to COVID vaccine supplemental uh, pay, they made, they made they brought in an extra $70,000 in income. What is uh, COVID vaccine supplemental pay? Um, what they, they put on the clinics and um, and the, the the state reimbursed the the town above and beyond what it costs for the uh, uh, not the town so much but uh, the, fire the fire department for what it costs them uh, hourly to 
to provide those those facts. Oh, at the clinics when they step so they need some money on the clinics. Yeah, I totally get it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, and the fire department, I just want to note here, was twenty two thousand over budget, but they had they said it was related to the well pump replacement. They did some resealing of pavement in the parking lot. It looks pretty nice actually. Um, they had an inspection uh, for life safety equipment, and they had to make some changes and improvements to life safety uh, equipment that they have. Uh, they purchased some new pagers, increased fuel costs, and replaced the LED lights. A bunch of LED lights, I think, in the high bay lights or whatever in the um, in the garage. Um, and they just want us to know that they did over 700 calls, both ambulance and, and fire department. Um, and then once again, I just put in there so we wouldn't forget. But they, I guess, they're going to be putting into their budgets and increases and in, in, um, for the paramedics, and they're looking for increased stipends. So. They asked the select board to consider if there were any ideas you had, uh, tax credits or something <clears throat> to help entice and volunteerism, basically. Um, but then the discussion kind of came up that unfortunately there's also not necessarily a lot of homeowners that you know if that's all we could really control, you know that. Um, that are actually live in East Montpelier and are working there, or live in Calus, because um, Calus was obviously there as well, and that are working there. But um, just, just ideas. If anybody had any, really. Um, I know that in the past legislative session, as part of the workforce development um, efforts of the legislature, um, there was money put aside for apprenticeship apprenticeship programs. So I'm wondering if that can be used to train new EMTs or new firefighters. So that might be something they could look into and explore. Um, yeah. 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 So I, I expect they're going to be coming to a meeting sometime along just to talk to us about it. Yeah. As we get closer to budget development. Yeah. So that's it. Okay. okay. Thank you. Well, thank you. Great report. And just, just to clarify on the lighting, I think it was clear in your report, but I just want to make sure that people understand, uh, if I understand you correctly, that um, they are replacing non-LED lighting with LED lighting. Right. right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because LED lighting tends to last for a long time. Right. Okay. And it's a lot more efficient. Exactly. Yeah. The problem with LED lighting is you've got to replace the whole light. Yeah. A lot of times. Yeah. Not just the bulb. No, you don't have to do that actually. But actually, all the LED lights I put on my car, I the whole light. It all depends on the light. <clears throat> because I know I went with the two uh, Costco's, I bought four foot lamps, and they all go right, they're all designed to right. go in with the work with yep. the current house. But it's you why know, an LED fixture, if what you're doing is replacing the fluorescence with LED, right. you put it right in there. Yep. But if you go out and you buy LED fixtures, the bulb is all made with the light. You got to oh, yeah. And then you have to take the whole fixture off. That's, That's what you're saying. saying. Yeah. yeah, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. It's, not a, it's not a good deal mm -hmm. because the fixtures are expensive. Right. You can buy a lot of fluorescent lights and take a lot of electricity with those fixtures to, to put in also. There's right. a paint. You, or you can switch out the lamps where they would fit and just use LED lamps. But if you're building a new building, you're going to buy LED yeah. lights. Yeah. Anyway. So I don't. I think they change the lamps. I don't think they change fixtures. They might just change the bulbs. Yeah. yeah. Which you can do. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. But actually, you don't save as much money if you do it that way because you should take the balance out and rewire it. Rewire it. The <laughs> Just saying that. I don't know how to do it. Not to do it. <laughs> <laughs> they doing it correctly. That's what I did. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I know I've got I've got enough so that I, I, I understand both ways. Yeah. All right. What was that you were saying about a five second item? Yeah, well, a lot of end items here take a lot longer than that. He knew he was going to take longer on some of these. Oh, yeah? Not me. Oh, yeah? Okay. We'll see. Let's go on now. Okay. No, let's monitor the rest of me. It's too late now. You're going to blow it. I blow it? Um, Town Treasurer Monthly Financial Report. There's nothing really earth shattering in here. And if you want to save some time, we're still waiting on the adjusting entries. We're working with the auditors. Uh, you'll be getting another report. This is just a draft for where we stand today. Um, you'll be getting another report once we finalize those entries at the next meeting. So, okay. is there anything that um, is concerning? Nothing. No, nothing. Okay. Concerning. All right. Well, I guess if we're 
we're way behind time, we can just keep going. That's your suggestion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Um, delinquent tax collector reports. I always like to say that. Yes. Oh, um, big. So well, all the names have been scrubbed. It's not really fun. Yeah, we didn't have names because that has been requested. Yeah. It's a nice thing to do. Um, so we're at $139,874. Um, essentially, there are 10 taxpayers that are more than one year delinquent, but two of those are estates. Um, one of the estates is kind of paying as they, as they can, the other estate. Um, Michelle has actually spoken with the attorney and they're you know, currently working through things, so she's keeping tabs on that. Um, really, for the rest of them, the balances are all not very large. Um, so essentially, she's still digging into this and will likely bring, if there's any action she wants to take, we'll bring any recommendations to the board at that time. So what we're looking at here, the total is all these years, 18, 19, 19, 20, 20 21. Now, what is the historical um, figure at the same time of year? No, you have that in your annotated slip for demo. Oh, I didn't look at that. We have uh, six years of historical figure. Oh, here we go. Yep. We're actually kind of below the normal for this time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Last year was actually lower, but not too far off. And then but lower than the other two years, but not by much. Yeah. One ninety-three, but nineteen. Turn it over for three more years to do this. Yeah, well, I want to read these first. <laughs> so it's pretty average, actually. Yeah, yeah. So it would be one is 21 and 22, the $91,000. Is that that our frequent flyer person? No. That's not the case. I'm thinking the one always goes over $100,000. Right. No. They hate it. Oh, really? Yeah. So is this one, this is one person though that owns that? No. no, 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 no. Oh, okay. No. That's just a year how much it yes, is. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, good. 10 tax days. Yeah, it's really Michelle's, you know, digging into these, getting yeah. her own information about them, and you know, yeah. she will decide at some point if further action needs to be taken. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, and we'll we'll hear about that in due time. Yes. Okay. Next one. External audit follow-up questions. So the auditor, I did provide you the email that they sent. Some of them. Yep. Um, I have answers to. Um, some of them I need help from the select board, and some of them are decisions the decisions that the select board needs to make. Okay. On item number one, there was a balance of um, sixty six thousand dollars that was actually from twenty twenty one that carried into twenty twenty two, um, and it's related to the village sidewalk project. Mm -hmm. So I did reach out to the grant administrator for that just to confirm that there were no additional funds coming in there or not. So this balance really should have been clear. Um, probably rather early on in 22. Um, well, I think the project was closed out maybe in January, but um, just wasn't something we had, I had ever discussed with anyone previously. Um, We're all done with that? There are no expenditures overhanging possible? These are the expenditures that are overhanging, not that I'm aware of now. So now there is zero activity. There are no we bills paid in We owe 66000 that, that we have 66,000 of expenses that we incurred oh, yeah, that expenses. were never okay. reimbursed, correct? Oh, they never And there's no money coming for them. So I'm not right. sure why the balance wasn't written off before. Okay. Um, I say Ooh. written off. Why but they so I speak old terms, mm -hmm. but um, why we didn't clear um, this fund of these expenditures. What exactly makes up these expenditures? I honestly don't know. But it was paid. Um, our, the reporting, our reporting does not lend itself to, to understanding that very clearly. Um, it's not like a bill. Is no, 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 no. We already incurred the Correct. expense. Yes. There's no reimbursement. This is essentially a deficit that is sitting there yeah. that we need to clear. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you're looking for a motion from the select board to yes. cover the expenses with the capital fund? Correct. Okay. Uh, so we'll okay, second. Second. I'll. Uh, uh, any discussion? Yeah. All of, oh, good. Oh, you're saying aye? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. <laughs> aye. The ayes have it. 
<laughs> if you're to have it, they do have it. Um, the next one is the record rest, uh, restoration fund. Um, it has a we, we kind of knew this um, yeah, because we yeah. committed some funds. We had discussed that we could use the general fund to cover this. I think this was probably back maybe in May mm -hmm. sometime. Um, the board just or the auditors just want to know do you in fact want to cover that with the general fund to confirm that? Or they said, you know, this is obviously a potential use of ARPA funds. If we want to defer the deficit mm -hmm. to next year, this year, to fiscal year 23, we can revisit this later. Mm -hmm. So I think we had previously talked about that we would cover this with the general fund. So I defer to the board if that's still what you want to do to confirm that. Um, or if you want to say, let's leave the deficit, we can sit on it and potentially use it, use our funds for it. Yeah, why wouldn't we do that? I mean, we don't want to spend money that we don't have to spend. We can just call the deficit and cover with our money later. That would be good. Yeah. We can put that forth as a suggestion to the town's people. And then yeah. 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 This and there will be additional costs that we have yet. And there's going to be some more. Yeah. yeah so right. I think it, I, I actually think it's helpful for us to just sit on this deficit yeah. and maybe wait and see what I do too. Yeah. Get, get the full cost and then we can determine that amount. And then, yeah. yeah and then we can throw that in and that's one of the Correct. things that we could spend the money on. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Um, another one of their questions was the East Hill trees, but that I know the answer on. Um, for they questioned the capital expenditures that were there on page 42 of the town report. Um, I did provide you guys some of the, the copies, um, but essentially we had expenditures budgeted for the municipal building, the town garage, and the emergency services facility. And essentially they were just asking. You know, we didn't spend really much of anything there. So, what was there? Was there a plan that didn't come to fruition? The I don't. Municipal? I don't. I, yeah, both the no. town garage and I. I think the, no. my understanding is I think these were funds that were kind of put in the budget, but I don't think there was ever really a detailed plan for how to spend it. Um, we're just trying to build up a, a war chest. Are, are we talking about the maintenance? No, 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 no. This is the capital. Oh, capital. This yeah. is for the capital planning budget. Oh, we just have a, we just have a, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. So I don't, we yeah, didn't so. spend any of it. No, that's we what had, you're talking about. That's what they're happened. saying. Yeah. Well, we're yeah. building, a, like you said, a war chest right. for these facilities when they need more work. It's, that, it's money that's there, it's a dedicated fund. Yeah. Do, do they not have a copy of our capital plan? Because that has, in it, because I recall the years that we plan to be making. Well, these were expenditures planned for fiscal 22 that were not spent. Oh, I, okay. That's we the didn't question. Spend them. We just rolled That's over. why they, they understand, you know, paving expense was delayed. Right. They get some of those things for this. Mm -hmm. Their question was, and I don't have the history on this, right. was there something specific? There was 19400 for example, allocated to be spent on the municipal building. Yet nothing was spent. Was there something planned that was delayed for no. any specific reason? But I don't no. think there was. No. In my and conversations, always. it doesn't, I don't think there was any specific. <laughs> and so, John, John's our representative on the capital plan. Yeah. So you got that. You're good on that one? Yeah, Number I four. think so. Number five. I think I can handle that one. Uh, that's that's being handled separately outside of um we we just need to work on our procedures as it relates yes. to the and Michelle's already, she's actually working with Ed Deegan, the town auditor. Um, they're going to be working on establishing a better <coughs> process or procedure for um, dealing with money from the, the recreation board. Mm -hmm. So the remaining ones, um, well, minus number seven, they asked about the reappraisal, but I communicated with the listers on that as well. Um, yeah, so this is a CLA? Well, yeah, 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 the CLA. Yeah. So, so why would we do that? Right. Oh, yeah. Only if we're forced to by statute. Yeah, which yeah. Deb seems to think we're going to be pretty well, close to that. She thinks be. by the end of 24, we would be. So oh, I, I have a reply from her that I will. Yeah, yeah it might come down. Yeah. So for item well, six on their list, eight, nine, eight. and 10, these are all funds that we have the Forest Fund, the Veterans Memorial Fund, the Rally Day Fund, and the Land Conservation Fund. And their question basically is, do we have any plans to spend the money in this fund? Yeah. Um, well, the land conservation one is easy. We have, since and all the time that I've been in town, we have a land conservation fund, and that is used for 
when there are opportunities to conserve land. Yeah. And, and I would yeah. think that until an opportunity presents itself, the right. money sits there. And right. And sometimes we add to it uh, at town meeting, and, and sometimes we say we have enough. Uh, so do we want, does the town want to buy land to conserve? No. The town has a history of, of um, paying for some portion of conservation easements on land in town. And we have a conservation uh, advisory commission to recommend to us future projects. Basically what happens is the land trust might come in and they say, will you commit X, X amount of money to this project? In this matching funds, basically you're getting ten thousand bucks or forty thousand bucks, and make them up with three hundred thousand. Yeah. So that's what we have to fund there because you never know when the request is going to come in. See money. Yeah. So you have to have money. I'm I'm curious, how much do we have in that fund? In the land conservation is twenty thousand six hundred eighty. Yeah. Not much. Uh, and and these are, it's not like we're sitting on mass funds. Yeah, I, I mean, they're not minimal, you know. Right. Like rally day, like rally day, maybe. <laughs> but you know, the forest fund is twenty seven thousand. Um, you know, so I'm just bringing this because I don't know what the you know intent was really with with these funds. So. Mm -hmm. It seems to me, I rally day, from what I understand, was an event that used to occur, but was kind of a family fun day per se. Yeah, yeah, um, exactly. yeah. And I understand that one reason it hasn't happened was simply because no one was really nobody was interested in planning it anymore. Right, right. So I don't know. I don't know that it's hurting anything for us to have the money still there. Should this? What is it like? Five hundred. It's six hundred seventy dollars. Yeah, so I don't know that any of this. I, I think. I think an appropriate response to them could be just that yes, these funds are here. No, there may not be anything specifically targeted for now. I mean, I can come up with just wait. Um, but uh, but you know, for for rally day, for example, it was a a family event that used to occur. Hasn't happened in a number of years. But coming out of COVID, there could be a, a research a new energy around potentially bringing this back, and it's something that. The board would like to leave here to. I'm kind of saying things I would say. To sure. Turning sure. on my auditor Gina speak right now, good. but um, but you know, but that you know that to me that's what it seems like these funds are are kind of for the Veterans Memorial Fund. Um, What's that? That, is. <laughs> I, that sounds like a serious. Was that for the memorial that we had, or who's to make one, or? I don't I don't Michelle found some graves, um, veterans' graves, or something like that. Is well, Michelle that? found some info on these for us in speaking with Don, and this is what I have written for that fund: money left over in 1991 when the new memorial was set up outside the town clerk's awesome. office oh, was deposited into this memorial account yeah. for use to keep the memorial maintained in the future. Um, and how much is in there? How much? It is fourteen hundred, just under fifteen hundred dollars. Fourteen fifty. So if you ever did need to make a repair, to that, so it yeah. could be. I mean, I, to me, you don't know what could happen right. at some point, but, and I would imagine a repair to something like that could get costly quickly. Yeah. So that's not good. Is there a reason why we would keep that separate from our overall capital fund? Good question. Well, it's not a capital expense if you're doing maintenance, is it? I thought. A lot of our well, I guess, I guess for yeah, something are. like that, I think you could, yeah, yeah, you could tweak it out of there if you named it in the fund. Uh huh, you have to name it in the fund, you yeah, don't have to have the plan set up, right? Yeah, that's all you have to do. I mean, there's no harm in leaving it there, but there's no harm in putting in the capital fund either. I guess, I guess, it gets interest where it is, so yeah. I mean, just it's it, not likely to get used right off, but it is there. Uh, it probably would be smart just to put that as a land in the capital fund. Just put money in the capital fund. It would be a lot cleaner. Yeah. Would it? Yeah. No? I mean, a lot of times they don't want you to have all these different funds money. because money can get filtered easier this way. Or we have in the capital fund like that, and it probably can still get filtered too. Yeah, right? it's still the same thing. Yeah. You've got a big column. They just don't like to see a bunch of different funds. Like I separate, yeah. I mean, if you put it in the capital fund, it's in the big pot of money. And you have a line item. Yeah. Can we do that with this one? You Just with that one. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the forest fund as well. I, I don't recognize that one either. What, what's that been used for? I think that was money that we got from logging. It is. Yeah. That's what that one Yeah. So have we historically expended it on anything for our town forest? I don't know. I don't think so. I mean, thinking about the 
town forest, it doesn't really require maintenance. Oh, you do plant trees? Well, we just had a forester come in and mark trees and cut and harvest. I don't know what the status is right now on the forest. Did it cost anything to have it marked and harvested? Well, usually you take it out of the month money to get in. Right. right. But sometimes when you're doing, you know, um, well, it's not maintenance, but it's uh, just good practices, good forestry practices, and you get a forester who's careful, then it can cost you more money than what you get for the timber. So if you have a little bit of money to improve the forest, that could be helpful. Okay. So that's these, do, do these have even... clearly been around a long time. Okay. The information yeah. Michelle found, I mean, it references minutes from 1986. Okay. Um, so I think a lot of these, it's the auditors were asking questions on things that have been around for a long time. Do we even have a plan for So it's a good year to ask questions on, on things that have been around a long time. I don't know. Why are they just yeah. asking this now? We could ask Paul Fee about that. Yeah. 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 Okay. If, I can I can reach out to him. If we need any money for or what's the status on it? Okay. Does it need to be taught? Does it need to be marked? Yeah. Do we have a 10-year plan? Blah blah blah. Yeah. Yeah. Let me ask him. Okay. And then I think I think we've agreed rally day to just stay as is because that there's the potential for that yeah. event yeah. um to come back in the future. I do land conservation. I think we agreed would remain as is because oh, yeah, it's it certainly something could come up. And that's not even very much money. Really. Yeah, for veterans that uh, yeah, we probably couldn't do I, a whole I, lot. I, I think it's gone up to forty thousand dollars or so, maybe at the It has been before, but there's been there's been times when you had to take thirty thousand or whatever yeah. out of there. So I think for the Veterans Memorial Fund, the question is, would you want well, to keep that there or move would it, it be to... better to put it in the general fund and just put a line on it? In, in the capital fund. Then. Capital fund, I mean, yeah. not general fund. Yeah. So I'm looking at 11. That, that's an accounting thing. Yeah. It's not really. Yeah. It's not on your list because it's more of a question. Okay, we, we want to get interest if we can, right? Yeah, it's yeah. really it's 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 really just an entry to it's a journal entry where we allocate interest to the different funds based okay. on the, cash, the money sitting in the bank account. Okay. It, it was decided way back when not to, I think by between Don and, and Bruce not okay. to allocate to this. And I think the reason for that was because the ARPA funds are so specific. Mm -hmm. So they wanted to keep those funds static. That makes sense. So the auditor simply asked why um, we did not we did not do that, um, and that is the understanding and speaking with Don as to why um, it was not done. So I'm going to provide that explanation back to them. Um, the auditor did tell me that towns are all doing it differently. Some are allocating, some are keeping it static. So I think it's it's because that was. That was my, my question back to them for a lot of things is, well, tell me what other towns are doing, yeah. you know, um, because they obviously audit a number of towns, so they mm -hmm. can help guide us on kind of what industry practice per se is. Right. So I think that our reason, to me, I, I kind of like the idea of ARPA staying the number that we know that it is yeah. and not changing. Yeah. Um, and, and honestly, it, it's not significant dollars. Interest rates are not exactly that high. So. Right. Right. Well, I think we've already established that we are taking a more conservative, cautious approach to these yes. ARPA funds and other towns. Yes. In the area. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Are, are you done? Good question. So we do want to move then the Veterans Memorial Fund to the Capital Fund. We just need to ask the question. Yeah. That'd be a better way to do this. Yeah. Okay. We, we, we're inclined to do it, and yeah, yeah. but we don't want the money. Okay. We we don't want the money just to go away. Yeah. No, of course. Right. Yeah. Okay. We don't want to just stick in the general fund and call it good enough. No, right. no, no, no. We want to keep some money inside. Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, okay. it was probably an important it project was. when it was done. Right. So I think, that's, I think that's the reason, you know, yeah. probably it was memorialized in its own funds and money mm -hmm. set aside. So we might not have had a capital fund back then. Uh, good point. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I kind of like to move to the next slide. Yep. Okay. Consideration of FY 2023 municipal grants and aid agreement. Is that for erosion control? And all that? This just... is the hydrologically connected roads. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Erosion control. Yeah. Yeah. So you just need us to authorize. Yeah, motion for me to sign the. So we accept it. Accept the grant and authorize. 
being able to complete the process. Okay. Perfect. So okay, got a second. second. So, so we're voting yeah. a second. So we're voting on um, the twenty twenty three municipal grants and aid twenty two thousand dollars to <clears throat> conduct work to improve conditions on hydrologically connected road segments that do not currently meet the state's municipal road general permit standard. Yes, make that clear for the public. Yes, yes, sir. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Did I just have it for Judith to change, or did you already vote? She froze. Oh, oh she froze. She temporarily froze. She's frozen. Uh -oh. Judith, you're frozen. <laughs> <laughs> this is like a Schrodinger's cat. <laughs> Maybe she's Judith, Judith, you're muted. If, if you want. Hi. You're she's unmuted. Muted. Still can't hear you. Your internet's on the fritz. You need high speed. Um, she's an underserved. She's underserved. <laughs> Maybe we can. Actually, she's not. We, we had enough. Yes. Uh, Hello, yes. Votes yes. Okay, thank okay. you. We'll have that. It's passed unanimously. Uh, the motion for the FY 2023 municipal grants and aid agreement. The next thing, item discussion on town management in light of COVID 19. Uh, we're at low. We're at low. Over at 65.06 per 100,000 population. Yeah, and it's probably five, five times that rate. Is the, chair. Yeah, the, the latest that I've seen is probably five times that rate in actuality, which would be three times higher than the old measure for being at high for community transmission. At least people mm -hmm. are dying rapidly. Yeah, but not only in the hospital, I've seen either. Yeah. Very few. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, I think it's, it's smart to mask up in public places, and uh, I don't see appetite to enforce that, require it. And uh, the town office workers are comfortable not asking members of the, not requiring members of the public to mask up. They have not expressed a concern. Yeah. They yeah. will tend to mask themselves mm -hmm. if they are concerned. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, that takes you to that item. Liquor permit, Sibley Farm, Blake Wedding. And that we can approve the permit and authorize town clerk for there to sign the request. This is for a wedding on Sibley Farm on September 24th, yeah. 3 to 11 p.m., 130 people, 110 of them drinking alcoholic beverages. Uh, uh, so yeah, we I move, move to authorize uh, to approve the permit and authorize the town clerk to sign the request. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. All right, got it. If you're to have it, you have it. That's liquor permit, access permit, new curb cut, McKnight Road. She's a Jewish problem. Yeah. So I would like to say, wait, wait a minute. I'd like to say, honorable chair, I'd like to ask you if I may excuse myself. For this <laughs> of course. Okay, I need to sit over there. That's right. I'm going to fall up protocol. I will not be involved in any discussion unless <laughs> you need information from me first. I'm be there. We need information. <laughs> We're doing so. This is a curb cut for a subdivision that is on the agenda for a final approval at the next DRB meeting. Um, it's <clears throat> it, it, there was uh newbies doing the DRB agenda last time, so um, this particular subdivision went in for a two step process when it could have been accomplished on a one step process, but unfortunately, because it was noted as a hearing for last time as preliminary. Um, it needs this time it's going in for final. I'm bringing it to the board because there were no concerns expressed at the last DRB meeting about the subdivision. It will likely pass with no issues at the next DRB meeting. So I think that the select board, I'm bringing this to the select board to review <clears throat> and if you so desire, approve on the condition that it impacts the subdivision is approved at the next DRB meeting. On September. Yeah, didn't we just look at this at the last cycle meeting? No, this no, not this access permit. All right. Yeah. So that was the Ayers permit. Oh, okay. So it's 630 feet to the closest intersection, and Rome Foreman Ferry has reviewed it and uh, yes. said that it meets town standards. And he has uh, Russian access. trees would need to be cleared for line of sight. How, how is that going to happen? Yeah, who's doing that? 
I, may I answer? Yes. Yeah, yeah you're you're, yeah. <laughs> you're not wrong on the site. <laughs> Maybe I'll brush hog it. <laughs> it's not that. Yeah, so. Okay. Yes. Make sure you get it done. Yeah. Yeah. It'll get done. Yeah. Can we go up and inspect it? <laughs> Come on up. <laughs> so if uh, Rogue Foreman Ferry is comfortable with it, with this information that we have on it, uh, I I um, move as you suggested to approve <coughs> the permit contingent on DRB approval. And, and I did note that it is. I did note a select board condition that is conditional on the DRB approval yep. of permit twenty two dash zero five one. Very good. Zero five one zero five four. It says here. Oh, I may have written four in the. It's zero five on two. The, the, the the permit the curb cut permit is five two. Sorry, I may have written the right wrong one on the. Uh, and it's zero five two. Uh, yeah, it's five two. Okay. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. conditional on the approval of two two dash zero five one. That is the actual subdivision. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. This is a the O five four is a yeah, sorry. It's a, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and you made the motion? I think so. Did yeah. somebody second? I oh, meant to. Second. Second. Oh, okay. <laughs> and you have the curb cut application there. <clears> folder? Yes, it's okay. inside the folder. So okay. we'll so have, we have three, three members people to sign it here. in attendance, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, only three, though, because John can't sign. Absolutely. Yeah, no. correct. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor, say aye. 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 The eyes are here. How did they do that? Yeah. Okay, John. I can go back to my seat. Yeah, on the, you you're on the slanted part of the floor. Yeah. Oh, it's it's slanted down there. It's slanted here. Uh, you were straight in yourself. Okay, so we're going to pass around the access permit. And then you have the warrant next. Yeah. So, okay, so the access the permit well. is is that right here? Yep. Yep. So today's date, 822. Correct. Very small one. No. <laughs> your own? I'll take it. <laughs> Good thing you waited until after the vote. Yeah. Hey, yeah. yeah. <laughs> thanks, thanks, thanks for the vote. <laughs> For the, uh, sure I did it all for, for the record, this has to do with a, uh, a gift <laughs> to the <laughs> free Um, It occurred to me before the meeting, and it just occurred to me now, I don't know why, because we're looking at money, of course. No. Oh, and I saw Amy's name right here at the top on the warrant here. I don't have one to sign for the uh, the Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. We got one in this week. Yeah. I know I know. I saw Amy's name. I saw twenty five yeah. bucks. It's great. Oh, <laughs> And if I didn't take I care of it, forgotten about it, but you know, if I hadn't taken care of it, I would have forgot right now. I would have forgotten. Okay. I, I had actually forgotten when you said that. I was like, I mean, you said that later. <laughs> I'm just curious, what is the um third item? Are we on the warrants? Um, yes, 
What's the third item? Maybe I just can't read it correctly, but it's Avenue Insurance, Avenue Insights and Analytics. Um, the invoice description, I, I can't, I don't understand what the um, abbreviations are. What's that for? The records, right? That's, yeah. that's a land records, land records. company. <clears throat> The digit item, yeah, Avenue. Well, and there are kind of ongoing system. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> the software. Okay. Oh, I just figured out what's going on. Okay, so the paper we just sitting here going like this. Uh, no, not really. But it's 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 I'm sorry. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> okay. Okay, so did, did you get the word? John oh, John didn't ask if it worked. I'm sorry. Okay, yes. But John, but just on this, personnel matters. Take your second. Is that our final order of business? That's what it looks like to me. Anything more to do with open session? I don't know anything unless you uh, you have anything else. I don't see anything okay. on your so memo um, I'm on the bottom, two new applications. Okay, so I would uh, move that we go into executive session to discuss personnel matters. And uh, I think Deirdre, I just can say thank you. And yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Wrap up the minutes. Gina, yeah. you'll wrap up the minutes? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep, I can let you know. Okay. Was there a second on that motion? Not yet. Yeah. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. So we will come out of executive session for workshop. We will come out of executive session and adjourn the meeting probably. Yeah. We're out of executive session. No action meeting. Aye. It's, yeah. Um, 50. 50 almost. I move we adjourn. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 <laughs> Thank you. Adjourned at 949. <sighs>